Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father David Rome. everyone I'd like to welcome you to this liturgy today. Today we are actually saying the readings and prayers for the Assumption of Mary. In South Africa and Zimbabwe, the bishops have moved the uh, readings and the feast day from last Thursday, when the rest of the world celebrates it on the 15th of August, to the Sunday so that everyone can celebrate this feast day. So we begin our liturgy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We offer this Mass for the prayers and intentions of all who listen to this broadcast this morning. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us pause for a moment to call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and Amen. on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We, adore you. we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, and she cried out in her pangs of birth, in anguish for delivery. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, with seven heads and ten thorns, and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them down to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child, that he might devour her child when she brought it forth. She brought forth a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, 
Now the salvation and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. On On your your right right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Ophir. The daughters of kings are those whom you favor. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Listen, O daughter, pay heed and give ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your lord. Pay homage to him. On your your right right stands stands the the queen queen in gold of Ophir. Ophir. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. On your right right stands the queen in in gold of Ophir. Ophir. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, but also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruit, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to, dis- to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Mary has been taken up into heaven. The host of angels rejoices. Alleluia. 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 May Almighty God be in my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, to a city of Judah. And as she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth, and when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed, that there would be a fulfillment that was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has granted the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from this, from henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty, has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. 
He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his posterity forever. And Mary remained with her about three months, and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was on the 1st of November in 1950 that Pope Pius XII declared the Assumption of Mary a dogma of the Church. It is the last sort of official, infallible teaching that we have received from the Pope. And why did he do that? So there are several reasons. First of all, he sent out an inquiry to all the bishops of the world. And he gave these reasons. There was an uninterrupted tradition in the Catholic Church starting from the first century that Mary was assumed into heaven. Assumed comes from the Latin word assumere, which means taken to oneself. So Jesus, uh, God, took Mary to herself, body and soul, into heaven. Secondly, that this tradition, the feast, is found in all the ancient liturgies. The belief of the Assumption of Mary is taught by all the early fathers of the Church. For example, Origen, who died in A.D. 253, St. Jerome, who died in 419, and St. Augustine, who died in 430. And there is negative evidence that Mary's tomb was ever reported or venerated. No one ever found a tomb, an empty tomb. The Old Testament evidence of the corporal assumption of Enoch lends that this is possible because it happened in the Old Testament to Enoch in Genesis and to Elijah in the second book of Kings. So there is this tradition, that long tradition, that is something that we've in a way sort of believed all the time and the Pope therefore just concretizes it and says, yes, this is something we do believe in and we must believe in it. There's a nice old Christian legend of when Mary died, apparently all the uh, uh, apostles were around the bed. This is only a legend, I reiterate. Um, And all the apostles were around her bed when she died, except for Thomas. Where we heard that name before when someone died. He was on his way to India to go and preach the gospel there, uh, as the tradition has it, that Thomas did go to India. So he was called back to come to uh, uh, see, uh, uh, because Mary had died, the mother of Jesus. And when he got to the place, he found an empty bed and just the clothes lying on the bed. A nice little legend that sort of connects Mary's death and assumption to uh, the death of her son. Why do we believe it? Uh, On the 1st of November 1950, Pius XII uh, declared it a dogma of the church, and then a couple of, uh, on that same year, of course, uh, South Africa received the uh, uh, Episcopal Conference and uh, became a, a set church where the church was now established with its own college of bishops. And so the Pope obviously then gave to the bishops of South Africa the Feast of the Assumption as uh, its patronal feast. So that's why we celebrate it this Sunday as well as in Zimbabwe, because the bishops move it to celebrate uh, for South Africa at least our patronal feast. And really, it says something the way this doctrine has been declared quite late, 1950, over nearly 2,000 years after uh, the story of Mary and Jesus. 
And maybe, maybe it says something about ourselves, that we get to know something more and more about Jesus. It's there already, but we, as we, in our journey of faith, we become more and more aware of this faith. We become more aware of this faith that we're able to say, yes, I do believe in that. And when we think about our own faith journey, we have been through along something like that, that we can now say, I believe Jesus rose from the dead. Or, uh, and so we can see the development of our own faith growing and growing as we uh, grow in our belief and our worship of God. And so that is true of the church as it got to know more and more and was able to then say, this is something we believe. So it is also true of ourselves that we are able to believe this uh, of uh, uh, our own journey of faith, that we get to know more and more and understand more and more of our faith. Another uh, reality about this feast concerns Mary herself. There she was going to visit uh, Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist. And there she proclaims this wonderful hymn, which we call the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So uh, her, her whole spirit then is joined with God. And this is something that we are all called to do there in the first uh, the opening prayer, we said that we may share her glory. This is what we are also called to do. And we see her there proclaiming that she is in this great uh, uh, work of God, that the rich, that she sees God being able to send the rich away empty. She has helped Israel, and she's able to see these facts as she uh, is able to proclaim this faith in the Lord when she visits Elizabeth. So this is true of ourselves too, that we also grow in faith, and that we are able to work with God, and that our, our spirit is our, our foundation there is in God. I like the story of two fishermen, one an experienced fisherman and the other inexperienced. And the experienced fisherman pulled in the big fish and then he put them in his icebox to take home to, to, uh, uh, for his kitchen. And, but the inexperienced one pulled in some big fish, took them off the hook and then threw them back into the water. And this carried on all, and eventually at lunchtime, uh, the experienced fisherman couldn't bear this anymore, that he was throwing away all these big fish. So he said to the uh, inexperienced fisherman, why are you throwing away these big fish? And the inexperienced fisherman said, I've only got a small frying pan. So this tells us a story of ourselves that uh, maybe... He limits himself because he sees himself as being limited with a small frying pan. We'd easily get a, a bigger frying pan. Maybe we also have our small frying pans that limit our vision and our faith in God. Maybe we have these uh, uh, limitations that prevent us from seeing God as he really is. And we need to look at Mary. There we see her, that she is able to see herself in this bigger picture of working with God. That comes out, doesn't it, in the uh, uh, first reading, that uh, from the book of Daniel, from the book of Revelation. This poor Nazareth girl is able then to uh, be part of this fight against evil. We too are in this if we are able to have a big enough pan to work with God. So let us pray at this Mass that we be able to, first of all, recognize our own growth and faith. Think back to your earlier years when you uh, had maybe a limited uh, faith and you can see how your faith has grown, usually through events and sometimes through not a nice events like a death or something like that, can help us to understand a bit more about our faith and our growth in faith. So let us recognize our own great growth in faith. Let us pray that we may be able to work with God as Mary did, that we will have a big enough pan for us to take what he sends our way, that me, we, like Mary, can work with him.
him. And therefore, as we prayed in that opening prayer, that we may share her glory. And let us profess our faith in God as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith in God, we bring our prayers to the Lord that we may be faithful followers of him in what he sends us and asks us to do. For the church, that we may be instruments of God's mercy, guides for all who are seeking God, and companions for those developing a relationship with God, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our leaders, as we celebrate the Assumption of Mary, the patronal feast of South Africa, we ask God to give our leaders wisdom and integrity. May they be inspired to become servant leaders who develop policies for the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to racism, xenophobia, and prejudice of any kind, that God will turn hearts and change minds so that everyone may be respected and their dignity affirmed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For refugees and immigrants, particularly those fleeing violence, that God will ease their suffering, guide them to safety, and stir the hearts of many to assist them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all women and children, especially those caught in situations of violence in their homes, that God will protect them and ignite a change in the heart of the perpetrators of the violence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all parents, that they may be inspired by the example of Mary, we ask that God will give them patience to help their children learn and grow during this difficult time of restrictions due to the pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are sick, that God's healing love will strengthen them, remove their pain, and restore them to wholeness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own prayers, those spoken out loud and those in the depth of our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, teach us to be generous, to serve as you deserve to be served to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and to ask for no reward, except of knowing that we do your will. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our human life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. This is God forever. Lord, we ask you to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us all from our sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this offering our tribute of homage rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection, and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since her own body she marvelously brought forth from her own body, she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim: Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, Buti Tejale, our Bishop, Duncan Soke, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Just think of peace just for a moment. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Immaculate.